Well, may I start by thanking my noble friend Lord Wasserman and others for explaining this amendment which relate to the recording of sex and gender by the police. Um, just to begin, the Government does not currently stipulate how a victim's or offender's sex at birth or gender identity must be recorded by the police. It is an operational matter for each individual police force to decide what information to record in cases where a crime is committed, taking into account any relevant national guidance. There are no other instances across government where there is a mandatory requirement to record both a person's sex as registered at birth as well as the required gender if this is applicable. The Office for Statistics Regulation is clear that it is for each department to decide when and how they collect data, including data on both sex and gender. We have already stated that we do not plan to require biological sex to be recorded across the criminal justice system in its response to a recent petition calling for the biological sex of violent and sexual offenders to be recorded throughout the criminal justice system. The response cited uh, the practical difficulties in determining biological sex, some of which have been cited this evening, as well as implications for those with a gender recognition certificate as, or a GRC as justification, implications of which I'll touch on later. I understand that this issue has received me media attention, with media reporting that there have been cases of sexual offences committed by transgender women where these crimes, which are traditionally male crimes, have been recorded as being committed by women. The Daily Mail also reported that the Home Office is working with police to develop a new procedure for officers to record the sex of criminals to ensure crime statistics are more accurate. As noted in much of this reporting, the Home Office has already started work with the National Police Chiefs Council to promote, and lots of noble lords have said uh, this words, standardised approach to the recording of all protected characteristics, which is currently at an early stage. Further, the Office for Statistics Regulation has also issued draft guidance for the collection of sex and gender data for public bodies. This work should bring greater accuracy and consistency of the recording of sex and gender and allow the police to under understand how best to collect it. It is through these processes, I think, my Lords, rather than legislation, that it is imp important to improve the accuracy of recording of sex and gender. There are a number of legal concerns arising from the amendment. It is unclear why the Government would need to mandate the uniform recording of this information as regards both alleged victims and perpetrators for all offences and how this would be considered both necessary and proportionate for operational purposes. Accordingly, it could amount to an un unlawful interference in someone's rights to respect their private and family life under Article 8 of the European Convention on Human Rights. This requirement might also breach Article 14 on the basis that it amounts to discrimination where transgender individuals are concerned. It is not clear, due to the scope of the amendment, that such a requirement could be lawfully justified. I put it to the Committee that legislating so that the police routi routinely record this type of data is not the solution to the problem of standardising how sex and gender are recorded. There are reasonable and appropriate actions already been taken to address this um, that do not carry the same potential consequences and, as mandating it by law. There will be more to be said on this in the coming months, um, as the noble lady, Lady Chakrabarti, said. But I hope that for now I have said enough to reassure, reassure my noble friend to withdraw his amendment. Uh, my Lords, I am grateful to my noble friend, the Minister, for her comments, thoughtful and uh, helpful as ever. I am 